Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the world's first Paul Weller fan podcast. I'm Dan Jennings and 10 years ago I gave up my live stream and career as a radio presenter with one big regret, never getting to interview my hero, the legendary British musician Paul Weller. This podcast exists purely to solve that issue. Welcome to Desperately Seeking Paul. Over the course of the series, I'll be joined by fans and friends, creators of content about Paul, people who have made music, artwork, videos for and with the great man himself. If you're a fan with a story to tell, then you're up. It's as simple as that. This week, I'm joined by the Magic Mod, also known as Ben Taylor. Not only rock and roll's favourite magician, Ben is a massive Paul Weller fan. He's also accompanied Paul and the band along with the likes of the Libertines, Pete Doherty and Reverend and the Makers at sold out gigs and festivals. So let's get into it with the magic mod. You're more than welcome. I mean, I can see immediately from the um, from all of the artwork behind you, you are a music obsessed um, yeah. mod as well as a magic obsessed mod. So we will kind of touch on how important this all is in, in your life. But first of all, let's let's talk about magic. So when did you first get into it? And, and was it like the rest of us and like a Paul Daniels magic kit? Hang on, mate. Bang on. <laughs> I've nice. got, uh, let me see if I can see it here. I don't know. I've got a photo of me and him up there. Paul oh, Daniels. brilliant. Yep. Um, I was about six years old and my mum and dad got me a, a set uh, for Christmas, I believe it was. At the time, I wasn't really too fussed about it. I was like, oh, great, a magic set. But then when I got really into it, when I lifted that leg, uh, that lid, sorry, off the box, to I'd tell everyone, for me, that was, that was the start of something special. I was just hooked on it. I was amazed that there was... Uh, so few few props. I thought there was about twenty props, but overall, you could have done like one hundred and twenty five magic tricks or twenty magic tricks, two hundred. Sorry, and I was just so fascinated by with a deck of cards that the possibilities are endless. You can do so many tricks, and I was just so amazed, and I wanted to try and learn as many as I could, and it, it kicked off from there. I mean, I was doing part. Well, I wasn't doing parties at the age of six, but as I soon got older, about nine or ten uh, for Christmas and birthdays I was doing little magic shows I was actually charging my um, my family to come and see it so about a pound <laughs> and stuff like that so I was still like a bit of a businessman even back in the day but no. it was good to be fair and um, it, it got me confident because I'm a bit laid back when I'm on the stage I'm, I'm that's that's like my second home and I'm very relaxed I get nervous before but as soon as I walk out on the stage to me that's it that's like this is what you've worked for this is your moment go out there and show what you can do and it all came from a Paul Daniels magic set amazing I love that I love that I wonder how many I wonder how many others there are who can say the same thing um and the and, and the big thing for you is still the cards right so that yes that props it's kind of like that pack of what is it 52 cards 52 then, cards yeah and that's I mean, the big one still for you yeah yeah I love it because I, I I've always Every sort of aspect of magic I enjoy, from the cups and balls to silk magic with handkerchiefs to rope magic to big stage illusions. But the, the one that really suits me and with the style is cards because it's so slick and you can always carry a deck of cards around with you. You're not always going to have a cups and balls on your parker or, or in your pocket or stuff like that. But it just works so well. It doesn't matter where you are. You can always pull out a deck of cards. You know, you could be in a restaurant, you could be in a bar, you could be on a train, you could be on a bus. I've performed in some random places when someone's just said to me like, oh, quick, you've got a deck of cards. It's like you, you'd be seriously surprised. I'm back at taxis and anywhere. You know, as soon as someone knows you're a magician or people spot you and they say, oh, show us a trick, you're on the spot. You've got to have something ready. And for me, a deck of cards because as I said you know like the possibilities really are endless you can do I I mean I do a few well I'm probably in my hundreds now of how many tricks I've done probably well over four or five hundred easily and I've got a few books that I write down I mean this year the last two three years I've been doing a magic mod Monday and you think there's 52 Mondays in a year I believe quick maths I'm not very good at that <laughs> but so I've done it from obviously this year done them all last year done them all that and and not it's very rare that tricks are ever the same right so you and they're not even big tricks that i would go out and really perform they're just tricks that you know you could do to a camera with no one else there but my mum always helps me out which is good but honestly i I really think hundreds hundreds of tricks i probably know wow and the thing is you even when you're performing you're still adapting not i try not to do the same trick the same when I'm meeting people you know like so you're always mixing it up a bit that's the you know the beauty or the best thing about cards is you can always change it whenever you want you know to you know try and amaze someone even even more than you did before 
So the possibilities are endless with a deck of cards. So when you're leaving the house, the, with the rest of us, it's like wallet, keys, phone. Are you wallet, yeah. keys, phone, cards? No, I'm deck of cards, wallet, <laughs> then keys. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and obviously, I mean, I had a little sneak preview then when you went to the to the Paul Daniels picture of, of the room that you're in, and it's kind of covered in posters of the stone roses, and I think you've got... Um, yeah. Oh, shit, I didn't think behind. you saw all that. Yeah, 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 that's amazing. Yeah, so, what an incredible room. It's like signed so pictures, this, Pete, Pete Doherty. It's cool. Yeah, this weren't going to be, well, it's my bedroom, really, but it's also like an office. So I'll show you over here. I've, I've, oh, let me turn that off. I was watching Wolf Creek in the background. <laughs> well, not in the, not obviously, not why we were doing this like before. Sorry, that's, <laughs> well, it's live, isn't it? You know, that's so right. <laughs> I've got, um, so over here is like my magic thing. And we've got like this, this is this thing I had from Britain's Got Talent. Yep. That was the stage door that I had at Brighton Rocks, uh, no, uh, Rock City and Nottingham. There's a few like the cards and it's like a, a dressing room. It's got like the lights around it. So I tried to make it as, as close to a, a dressing room when I'm always in it. Up here, these are little bits of memorabilia that I've picked up along the way. And this story is actually quite, quite interesting. I'm sure we'll touch on it a bit more. But these glasses here, these Ray-Bans were actually a gift from Paul Weller. So oh, oh, I'm never, yeah, I'm never going to wear them just because they, they mean so much to me. And um, it, it really was a nice touch. I, I went to the studio with him and I had on these similar sunglasses, uh, these ones here that I bought in Brighton, uh, these ones here. And he said that he had these Ray-Ban ones. And then he, he come back and I was trying them on. I went, I like them. And he was like, mate, you can have them. And honestly, no. it was just, I was just, <laughs> yeah, I was blown away by it because he's, you know, it's just a lovely thing to do. And for me, I remember that for the rest of my life. And that's why I've got up there with a picture of my uncle, who was a big influence in my life. A picture of Paul Daniels, who was an influence. And I've got like my, my first ever poster of when I did a, a documentary. And then this was the funny story. That's, this is a the first playing card Paul ever signed for me, so I got that in a in yeah, a, so, so a good, so good luck. And then Paul Weller as a signature. That's it. That's Amazing. it. I mean, over on the here, this obviously you've got to have a big picture of Liam. This one here is from the uh, Happy Mondays. I got to interview Sean Ryder in Manchester, and before the interview, me and the missus went out, and I found this really cool poster shop, and I bought this Liam Gallagher one there, yeah. this Stone Roses one, the Who one, and I picked up that uh, Happy Mondays picture, and uh, I thought, oh, I'll just ask him to sign it at the end, and he did, which is a nice touch. So that's like my music and magic bit, and then in this one is my quadrophenia bit, so I've got obviously signed by Gary Shield, uh, Trevor Lang, uh, Phil Daniels, poster, and then poster signed by Phil. That was... Love it. So do that, meet. So, you know, it's, it's amazing. And this is probably the one you're like. I've got all mod cons signed. And then recently, I bought this picture from Derek D'Souza, the, uh, you uh, know, yeah. the photographer. Yeah. yeah, And he put this picture up, and, and I fell in love with it. And it's a picture of... I can't see it. Can you see it? John Weller and yeah. uh, Bruce Foxton love it. on the yeah. stage. And I fell in love with it, and I, and I just had to... Had to buy it, obviously, a few of me. And then a few bits of, like, scripts of interviews that I've done with people. Sean Ryder, Alan McGee, the Quadrophenia cast. And then the Pete Doherty, what, oh, is the lyrics to probably one of the best songs in the world, Ghost. And then that was the set list from the O2 with Weller. And then these ones here are the gigs I've done with Pete Doherty at Rock City, uh, Kenish Town with Pete Doherty and then that's Manchester Pete Doherty you know the reason I'd, you know, I'll show you is because I'm really proud about it because I wanted to be a footballer believe it or not <laughs> that didn't go down so well so <laughs> I thought I'd be the next best thing well I wanted to be a singer as well but that didn't go very well either I couldn't play an instrument so then I thought I'd just be a musician but <laughs> it's given me the lifestyle and it's made me the it, I've performed in some of the venues that I've I've always dreamt of, you know, like I did Hammersmith Apollo, Brighton Centre, Rock City, Kenish Town, venues that I never, you know, dreamt of either being on the stage, let alone, you know, being backstage and stuff like that. And it's just, yeah, it's given me everything, the magic. 
It's mad. I love it. I, love it. I mean, that, <laughs> I that, went on a bit then, didn't no, I? I'll give you a whole tour. <laughs> no, that was that. lovely. A little tour of your bedroom was lovely, and um, and all that memorabilia. Oh, careful, careful. The sign, <laughs> <laughs> the sign pictures and all that. So, so let's pick out a couple of those memories because that's fabulous. So, I, I'd love sure, to know. Sure. Um, you were kind of support acts for the Liberty. Talking to Pete Dossi, you were support acts for the Libertines on one of their tours as well, right? Yes. Yeah. That, this that's a funny story. This one. So I was doing a gig for Virgin Radio. I had a missed call from Cole Barrett from the Libertines. And um, because I was performing, I never keep my phone on me when I'm out performing. And I come back, I thought, oh, we'll see one. <laughs> I called him back. I thought, man, not like that, but I thought maybe he wants a beer or something. So yeah. when I called him back, um, when I called him back, it was Pete who answered. And it's the first time I've ever had contact with Doherty. And it was just, oh, mate, it was, I was blown away. He's like, hello, mate, you all right? Yeah, all right. Yeah, we want you on tour, mate. I was like, bloody hell, no way. I was thinking, this has got to be a wind up. <laughs> and um, he went, hey, I'll pass you over to Cole. And Cole was like, yep. Yeah, Yep, we, yep, we want you on tour. Right, tomorrow, Glasgow. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in London at the moment. I've got, and this is like, it was like 10 at night. I'm thinking, how am I going to arrange to get to Glasgow for the next day? I'm like, I don't think I could do that. So then he was like, next month, uh, next Thursday, Friday, it was Warrington Par Hall. I went, yeah, what an iconic venue. <laughs> so I had a week to prepare. And then on the Friday, I remember getting on the train and going up there and I was I was very, very excited, but at the fact, same time bricking it because <laughs> it was the first time I've really been on on a big stage performing to a music crowd. You know, when I did it with Paul, Paul kindly let me be a little support band, but I was never not not a support act as such to get um it was never on the posters, but he said to me word of mouth, he goes, Do you want to come and, and uh entertain the crowds and I was like blown away by that and the bands and then they, they kindly did a lovely post at the end which I didn't know I didn't you know I didn't think they would or didn't ask him to sorry and saying it was lovely to have the magic mod you know entertaining the crowds and, and the bands and I was I was so touched by that and I thought this 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 could work you know walking around crowds so, sort of doing it as a support act but not being on the stage but then the libs wanted me on the stage and I was like like this is a moment now <laughs> and now you, you're not always going to be you know, everyone's cup of tea. It's like going to a comedy act. Not everyone's going to laugh, are they? Or even, and, and to be a, the first, I oh, was I the first, I think it was the, no, I was the one before the Libertines. So there's two bands, then me, and then the Libertines. So there was a big, big old crowd in there, I tell you. And they're, they're a bit tanked up and, and they're getting a bit leery. And, uh, you know, the thing is with me is I'm pretty quick on the comeback. So as soon as someone shouted something out, I shouted something out back and the crowd loved it because they don't, they didn't expect me to come back so quickly. For the first attempt, I think it went all right. I mean, we had a little bit of technical difficulties with the camera and the angle in where I was because we had a big, we had a camera in the corner and I had to perform in front of the camera for the big screen that we had in the background. But you know what? I, I had more positive feedback than I did negative. You know, no one, the way I look at it, the bloke who was the sound guy at the time, Andy, he said no one walked out. If anything, more people come in. So no one walked out and he didn't get booed. That's, <laughs> that's a positive you, for a first you ask show. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's it. You've got a few people saying, I think someone said, uh, when's the magician on? <laughs> <laughs> and, which I was quite... I, I took I took, I took, took a bit. I said, well, sorry I turned up late, mate. Your mum was backstage in my dressing room or something like that. I come up with something like that. And people don't expect... They're like, oh, yeah, you know, he's got a bit about him. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Got, because as soon as you go back to the old school jokes, like that, I mean, I love it, you know what? I recommend, I love it when people, you know, have a go because it, that, I think that's what it's like. And I try and get everyone involved when I'm, when I'm performing. I encourage it. I like it when people get involved. You know, you paid your money. If something's rubbish, I'd rather you tell me and I'll step it up a notch. Love it. Love it. Now let's um, talk about Paul Weller as well. Um, so when did, you, when, when did you first discover the music of Paul? Oh God. Again, young age. All Mod Cons was the first album, that, that one I showed you up there. Mm -hmm. uh, I got that when I was about nine years old, I think. Do you know what? I didn't even have a vinyl. Well, I didn't personally, not a nine. I didn't have a vinyl player. My mum did. But I was, I was just amazed by the, the artwork on it. And Well, not, not so much. Like, I was just so impressed by this, this well-dressed band. And I was like, oh, I was, it just sucked me in. I don't know. It's like a magnet. And I, I picked it up and I thought, I've got to play this. And um, my, my mum didn't used to have a record player out. So she dragged it out from the loft and I played it. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's like, boom. It, it, that was it for me. I'm sure it was nine or ten, nine or ten, and it, and it really stuck on me. And the one that really did hit me 
was setting suns. So after that, literally, as soon as I discovered, I was like, Mum, I don't know what else, you know, did I have any more? And then she was sort of telling me, because she's always loved the jam. And I yeah. think she had a few of the jam singles in her loft, which we, we dug out, and Style Council. So I got into them. But for me, it was the jam. And, and still to this day, in my opinion, one of the best bands ever. They're certainly my, my favourite band. I, I'd take them over Oasis any day of the week. I get a lot of stick for that, but for me, if there's no jam, there's no Oasis. And for me, Oasis are, oh, sorry, the jam, they, they were just, they had everything, didn't they? The, the aggression, you know, the aggression, the arrogance and of, of the way they play it, the rawness, you know, it was just, everything about it was cool. And I was like, right, I want to be like that, but I couldn't be. So I'd be a magician as well. <laughs> I'd be a, I'd be a magician instead, but I'd be the best one there is if I can be. <laughs> I, re- I read some. I read something about you saying that um, you play. It was either Setting Suns or All More Cons. You play that every day. Setting Suns easily. Setting suns, I played yeah. it. Played it um, when I didn't play it yesterday. Funny enough, but I normally I played it today. Played it today, and I had a good. I pulled it out. I normally play it on me uh, on my phone on Wednesday. What will be today? Friday. See, I mean, days just go when you don't really know what you're doing, do you? <laughs> but I played. I watched Fulham on Wednesday, and after the game, I, I put the final on Setting Suns, and I think I played it twice. Played the fir- played the first side twice, and then turned it over and just played the second side twice. All in. Thing about that album. It's like, to me, every time I listen to it, it just gets better and better. I don't get bored of it. You know, I, I can't get bored of it. It's something that just, I can't explain the feeling you get. You know, you, like your hairs go up on your arms when you hear it and you're like, oh my God, this is this is just amazing. You know, um, everything about it, you know, it, it just gives you, gives you a bit of a lift as well, you know, when you, when you hear the music that you love. And um, to me, it is... Like I said, something that I absolutely adore, that album, and I do play it religiously, just getting it out now. Because um, it's just something, I don't know if it's the first pressing or something. I've, I love my vinyls, though, but I've got it in a little case. Oh, nice. <laughs> and there we go. It is beautiful, isn't it? But I mean, you, you think, I mean, my favourite one on it is Burning Sky. Absolutely love it. Favourite jam song ever is probably Ghost. Uh, that's, that's off The Gift, wasn't it? That's the one you've Ghosts. got on the wall there as well, the lyrics. Yeah, yeah? that's right. the lyrics yeah, yeah, for that. Great, yeah. But, I mean, you you look at these, right? Girl on the Phone, Thick as Thieves, Private Hell, Little Boy Soldiers, Wastelands, Burning Sky, Smithers Jones, Saturday's Kids, Eat and Rifles, Heat Wave. That is a banger after banger. <laughs> like, that is literally, imagine if someone, if a band today in this, in this day and age brung out an album like that with every song a song you, like you don't you you can't skip through this album. Anyone who skips through that al- album needs their head checked. It, I'm telling you, <laughs> because I mean, you can't you can't do that to that album. You're right. It's like a greatest hits on its own. That album. hundred oh, percent. Yeah, you know, like it's. I, I just. I mean, you think I would love to have been about in that day and age when when this come out and to see it being performed live because you just don't get bands doing music like that anymore, do you? Let's be honest. It's. <laughs> That was it, really, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that is, yeah. yeah, like you said, that is special. That is talent. Now, when did you first meet Paul then? So how did it come about? So obviously you go from the jam, I'm presuming you like the Style Council, the solo stuff. Yeah, so yeah. How did you come to kind of get involved with Paul? Well, I met him on 24th of August, 2015. I've got it uh, just underneath the card. And um, a moment that I'd never forget, you know, it was, it was just incredible meeting him um, for the first time. And we got on like a house on fire. We really did. You know, he heard about me, and which was <laughs> was an honour on itself through uh, Mark Baxter. I believe you've had him on the show. Yeah, you? yeah, we've had Baxter. On lovely, legend. lovely fella. Love him. Lovely fella. And um, Johnny Harris, the actor. They they both uh, were talking about me to Paul once, and then one night I had a text saying it's Paul Weller, and I was thinking. <laughs> Nah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's mad. What was it? 2015, yeah. So, uh, and it was, it was a fright. It was, the text would have been on two, it would have been on the 23rd of all, no, the 22nd. I think I was playing golf and it ended up, somehow we ended up in a pub after t- two two holes of golf. Like we did the first hole, then the second hole. Lovely weather as well. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember everything about it. And somehow we thought, should we forget this and just go to the pub? So we went to the pub and, uh, oh, must have had a few pints and then you get a text like that and you think someone's having a wind up here do you know what I mean so I didn't 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 um, didn't reply back and then I had an email and uh, oh hang about this this is this is actually him 
and it was just an amazing thing to have that and i still i've you know to to have a text like that from someone you idolized as a kid and the the kindness and the love that he's given to me over the years has been nothing short of amazing it is inspiration really because you know there's people out there who'd love to meet their heroes and and i've built a friendship with mine and it's something that oh, it gets you when you talk about it. Like, I can't believe it, to be fair. But he's the most loveliest. That he loved, My mum loves him. And I think, he, you know, they get on when, when they saw she, she's always loved him. And um, I've, I think he knows that I was always a massive Jam fan. You know, like the other day, well, not the other day, a, a while ago, I was talking um, to my mum. We were, we were talking about, no, it was the other day, sorry. Time's just flies. We're talking about the guitar. You remember the Wham guitar that he had? Oh, yeah, yeah. Me and my mum were saying, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen, she found a picture. She's just discovered, like, Facebook, bless her. So she's always on it. And they, she's found this, like, jam page, and there's always pictures of, like, the jam and, and Paul on it. And there was this picture of him with the Wham guitar. And I said, wait there, love. And I showed her a, a while ago when I was in the studio. He still got that guitar, and he let me actually, <laughs> ho- he let me actually like, hold it. And for me, that's that's... That's timeless. I couldn't play it, so I just held it like a newborn baby. We <laughs> managed to get a photo with it, but it's, do you know what I mean? Just to, I was just, as soon as I lifted it up, I was like, "This is the holy grail of guitars." This yeah. is, do you know? You think of the gigs this has seen, the music that's come out of this, like it's 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 mesmerising. That's a word. Just, you need like a little jingle when you lift it up. It's like, oh <laughs> mate, I mean, if I, I I know magic, but lifting that up felt like magic. Felt like real magic to me. Honestly, I was literally speechless. I think you could see it in my eyes. Like when he lifted the case up, it's like this this like the lights went dim and this white light just zoomed in on the on the <laughs> guitar itself. And I was like, I've got to touch that. I've got to lift that up. I've got to get a photo with that. Bless him. I said, can I have a photo of it? He said, no, mate, hold it. You hold it. And I'll take a photo of you. And I was like, <sighs> mate, it's, do you know what I mean? It's just tight. It's, it's what dreams are made of, mate. You know, it's everyone in that circle, the whole band, the, the technicians, the guys, you know, Stan and Charles in, in the Black Barn, everyone, they're, they're just the loveliest people. It's a right, lovely little family. We always get in there. Whenever I'm down there, we always take the piss out of each other and have a laugh and make cups of tea and have a curry and it's just what you want really isn't it do you know what I mean I mean I've been so fortunate I mean I was I'm not in music but they've took me under their wing and I do magic and it's just, it's just mental mate it's absolutely mental it is crazy I'm so I've, grateful I've, I've heard that he's kind of given you like some life-changing advice as well like career advice and, and, and yeah really support you there. yeah there's a lot that I, as for obvious reasons I keep a lot personal because yeah, it's personal just to me no one yeah. no one else would ever understand what it meant I mean if I did tell people they'd be oh don't get that but it's because it's personal but he, you know he remembered, he remembered being with him and, and he said mate when we first getting up we had like five people coming to watch us play five people do you know what I mean and he said but we never gave up we just kept knocking on that door and I was like that's it isn't it though if you believe in yourself like he did and his family did and his dad, you know, it done wonders for him and the band, didn't he? You know, what a great thing to have is, you know, your dad is a manager. God bless him. That's just unbelievable. That's just the perfect thing, really, isn't it? You're right in terms of his own family, but then the the, mm. the, the band and everybody at Blackburn, everybody I've spoken to says a similar thing in terms of that's a real kind of family unit, a close family unit. Oh, it, you can't, I've never, I mean, I've been very fortunate in in the line of work that I've done to to meet a lot of people and, and being in, around some great environments but to me that whole place even when you go to a, a, a well of geek and you're backstage the people it, it's just it's such a special atmosphere it really is you know I don't know you can't recreate that it just happens if that makes sense mm-hmm. you know sometimes I go on when I when I chat but that's just special all, all the people around there are just just lovely people you know and I've made some really good friends with the band you know I know managed to know Crofty really well Steve Craddock in particular know him really well now um, Tom Ben I, I know them all I've got to make a friendship with every single one of them and it's just amazing I mean what a, what a lovely thing life is isn't it you know it's sometimes you know you go through dark patches in life where not many gigs happen and stuff hence you know like this year but then you look back on stuff you've achieved and that just spurs me on to achieve even more when we can get out there and smash the back doors out of it again yeah, I bet. I bet. As you touched on Steve Craddock, because he's somebody I've not. We've not talked about Steve Craddock an awful lot on this podcast yet, but I think he's somebody who is such an important part of that mix in terms of the album. Yeah, my opinion, one of the most underrated guitarists ever. 
He's flawless. He is unbelievable. I've been watching, you know, even from Ocean Colour scene, uh, his solo stuff, in my opinion, I think it's perfect. Phenomenal writer and a phenomenal guitarist, honestly. I've, I've said it to him so many times. Funny story, he, we were in... Once he said to me, you've got to teach me a card trick. And I said, all right, you've got to teach me how to play guitar. And he was trying to teach me um, the Lars, uh, There She Goes. And I was getting it a bit, to be fair. And then I weren't, you know, I was picking it up and then I got a bit bored. <laughs> and then I picked it up again and I was like, I can't do this. You really got to stick at it. And the stuff I've seen him do is just phenomenal. Paul, as we all know, is, is absolutely exceptional. But, you know, he's, in my opinion, again, one of the best guitarists. Steve Craddock as well, you know, you, I mean, what a combination you got two fantastic guitarists yeah, in, in yeah. one band is just it's phenomenal. It's a rest, you know, it's a recipe for, for just good things to happen really, isn't it? Fantastic music, which is what has been happening. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been, I know that I've been to live gigs and I've, you realize after a while, you kind of like, I've not looked at Weller once I've spent like three songs just looking at Steve Craddock playing the guitar because you're in the front. Mate, row. Totally mesmerized. Some of the riffs, some of the riffs he does. Honestly, unbelievable. There's a song he does with Ocean Colour Scene. I, it's My Shadow. Oh, I'm yeah. sure yeah. it's that. Yeah, yeah. And he goes from playing the piano to getting on the guitar at the same... And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't even tap my head and rub my belly at the same time. <laughs> and he's doing that. It's just... It's flawless, honestly. There's some great... Sometimes in the evening, I'm always on YouTube and I, I look at old gigs... I, I love I love a bit of Ocean Colour Scene and that yeah, song in yeah. particular. The little riff they or he does in particular is it's just uh, it's unheard of, isn't it? You know, it's just unbelievable for me. That's real magic. That's real magic. The very first gig that I saw well, I was would have been ninety two, I think, Paul Art Centre and uh, yeah. o- Ocean Colour Scene with a support band. So this was pre Riverboat song. This was yeah. In their kind of baggy period, if you like, um, and there they were the support act to Weller, and it was, and it was just, it, I think it, it was just after he'd been calling it the Paul Weller movement. So it was that first album, and That's yeah, what this T-shirt is. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I have one of those. I wish I still had it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was an Ocean Colour Scene support act and then Weller on afterwards. Not a bad gig, that. <laughs> the first one. No, not at all. A bit like, um, God, when was it? The Hyde Park gig. You had the Rifles, Johnny Marr, Paul Weller, and then the Who. Yeah. I mean, what a day that was. <laughs> That's not bad, was it? That was not bad. It was a nice day. I know the weather was good on that day. It was good. I think so. I mean, I know I was there, but I can't remember <laughs> anything else. <laughs> I remember when Miles Kane, they did um, Miles Kane, lo- again, lovely fella, I got to know through Paul uh, at a Brighton gig, which was so lovely. He he come out and played That's Entertainment, didn't he, with, with Paul, and I thought that was a yeah. lovely touch. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, this has been so lovely, um, Ben. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Um, Any time. Of- I love it. Oh, a couple of final questions for you. Um, and I think I'll probably know the answer to this one already, but let's see how we go. So you're allowed one Paul Weller song. It can't be an album. One song for the rest of your life. Which one will it be? Jam or solo or style council? Whatever you want. You can't have one from each era. You've got to pick one. <laughs> oh, all right. Ghosts. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that song just, I don't know, it still gives me, as I said earlier, goosebumps. That, that, that song is phenomenal. That see- really is. I think I've seen yeah. him perform that live in recent years as well. So he's, he's, Mate, he's done that occasionally, yeah. He's done it a few times and it gets me. I, in fact, I remember once being in the studio when they were going through the set list and he played it and I was like, this is, like, this is perfect for me. Do you know what I mean? This is like the be- this is, I couldn't care what, what happens the rest of my career now. I've just heard this in the studio. Do you know what I mean? It's just phenomenal. His new album, Going On To Music, though, I know we're going off the subject you're going to No, no, I want to know, I I saying, I know anything about the new album. Go on. <laughs> he's the, oh, not the, new, the the last one, sorry, that come oh, out. On Sunset, all right, yeah. Yeah, fantastic album. I can't, you know, I was, um, I mean, look, that just proves what he, he's the sort of bloke, you know, he's got, look at the sort of genres of sort of different types of music he's gone through. And it's still a banger in my opinion. You know, the way he just changes it from, you know, where he went to the jam, the style council and solo and the last two albums. What was the one before? True Meanings? Yes, yeah, so it was True that? Meanings. That's right. That's it. That one. And then on Sunset. I mean, they're just, I think they're, they're timeless. I mean, it got to number one, the, the last one, didn't it? Yeah. Did you know? Track number three, Old Father Time. There's actually a magician in that, in that song. <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't know yeah. that. No, no. Right, it, right, right. Here we go. Here Are you on go. the credits for it? Where's my copy of that? Oh, don't worry about that. Get your copy out. Get oh, your copy out. 
mate, this this is pure magic. Let me show you. Here's my copy. No, do it like that. Oh, Here's my beautiful. copy. Look at that. All right. The pink vinyl. The pink vinyl. We got got it a little little design it says, bit. Yes, magic. Keep making it. Uh, one love. Put one love, love Paul Weller. Nice right. S- signed album. And hang on, let me see. There we go. Can you see? Oh, I can't done. see. Can you see it? Zoom in a bit. Yes, there you are. Magic mod. Claps. Claps. <laughs> that's it, mate. We were, we, that's it, me. I can get, everyone's like, mate, seriously? Because w- the way it happened, I was in the studio and he was, pra- he was doing this song, and then um, Stan, I think, said, "Oh, do you know what we need? We need some claps in that." And he goes, "Magic, come on!" And I'm thinking. <laughs> No, really. If anyone's good with his hands, bring magic in. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, I was thinking, no. I didn't expect, and I said this, I didn't expect to be on the credits. And then one day he texted me, and it was a picture before the album came out. He, um, he, he sent me a picture of the back of the album. And, mate, I, was, I had tears in my eyes, like joy, tears of joy, because I was like, that's it. No matter what else happens this year, didn't expect to what happened did happen. Do you know what I mean? I didn't yeah, expect yeah. A, like, you know, a big <laughs> pandemic and everything to get locked down. It's not my fault, but I thought whatever happens this year, that is it now. Like I'm, that's it. To be on an album from my hero, I don't. That, for me, that that that's made my year. Love it. I mean, love it. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> easily. Final question then. So um, ob- yep. obviously the, the podcast um, culminates in a, a, um, a conversation, a chat, a meeting with Paul at Blackburn. Um, what should I ask him? Is there, is there anything I should cover, do you think? Or um, a- any burning question you'd like to get answered or anything you think actually he'd be well up for talking about? I never really thought of that, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> Why would you have done? <laughs> no, I never really thought, I've never really thought of a question to ask him. I just... See when I see him, we just talk about football and magic and music. I never really. I think yeah, I've always wanted to know like about the jams that you know. There's some lovely, you know, from maybe what was what was a you know a real standout gig mm. for you, you know, where you just thought that's it, I've nailed every single song. Uh, but other than that, you know, I think I never really thought of that. I don't know. What would you personally say is your best ever song? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because he's you know the songs he's written are just phenomenal. In my opinion, he is the best British songwriter. And then you get Noel Gallagher. I think they're both up there. I mean, Noel's stuff is incredible. I get slated when I say Paul's one. You know, the best. Um, it's not me being biased. It's just I've always thought that. Yeah, I think he is the best songwriter. I, I mean, honestly do. Well, it's, a, it's a hit run over forty years, isn't it? And it's kind of and, oh. that, and that's rarely dipped at any point, really. Let's be honest. So. No, he's he's still on there. You know, there was a what's what's the BDI BDI did an album, uh, different gear, same still speeding, something like that. It's like that, you know, different age and still getting still going from strength to strength. He's not yeah. showing any signs of slowing down, and that, in my opinion, is the. Um, you know, that's just the, the mean, it's just an icon in music, isn't it? Really, isn't it? I'll ask him who he thinks has provided the best claps on a record. Ask him who his best magician is. <laughs> no, who, who his favourite magician is. Darren Brown. <laughs> if he says that, I'll get, you know, I might have to cry about that. <laughs> d- delete that number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ask him who the best claps are. <laughs> and, and then finally, Ben, um, obviously, so you're living in Crawley, um, home of the mighty Crawley Town FC. Yeah, it's uh, not too bad. It's, uh, I, I quite like it. It's a bit out of the way. No, it's nice around there. We um, take the kids to, is it Tilgate Park? Yeah, around that. Yeah, park. I live, yeah. literally, it's dark now. But my window uh, on the back of the house, that, that you look out there and that's, you see the park straight away. So I live oh, literally nice. on top of the park. I used to do the breakfast show at what was Mercury. Mercury. Um, yeah, so I was there. God, when would it have been? 2000, and, I think 2003 to 2006, I think I did the breakfast show, yeah. And who, who else was it? There was um, oh, someone yes. and Emma. Someone and Emma. That was me. <laughs> Dan and Emma. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, was that you? Yeah. Mate, this is funny, <laughs> right? I've got right. This is this is hilarious now. That's this is weird as well. I've got somewhere right. I used to be at Cubs or Scouts, one of them. You turned the lights on once years ago in Crawley, didn't you? Yeah, Both yeah, yeah. Them, right? yeah, yeah. And you had these postcards signed, and it was a picture of you and her, both in black, sitting <laughs> down on the floor. And I've got one of them somewhere, and then I've got one of Chris Oxley. I was a youngster. <laughs> but yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, that was it. I remember that. Dan and Emma. I'm like a local celebrity for you, then. <laughs> Mate, yeah. 
send me a couple of postcards again. <laughs> yeah, that's wicked, isn't it? I'm going to have to try and dig that postcard up one oh, yeah, day. Oh, yeah, do. Yeah, do. Well, what so, a small world. Um, all the best. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I know that obviously this year must have been an absolute car crash in terms of um, oh, getting God, yeah. down the road and gigging. So um, I, I fingers crossed that we can kind of bounce back from this pandemic really bloody soon, right? Definitely, man. Definitely. And hopefully see you at a gig and we can... Uh, have a couple of light ales. That sounds like an absolute dream. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. <laughs> You're welcome. You're hey, welcome. Ben, thank you so much for, for letting me into your bedroom there and for this conversation. <laughs> it's been an hey, absolute don't joy. Don't say it like that. <laughs> You're more than welcome. I've enjoyed it. Oh, that sounds even worse, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Thank you. Amazing. Loved every second of that. You can really tell what a massive Weller fan Ben is and how blessed he feels to be in part of that inner circle. Next week, I'm joined by Ian Snowball, otherwise known as Snowy, author of the brilliant Paul Weller Sounds of the Studio book, along with a bunch of collaborations with the jam drummer Rick Buckler. He's done a tribute to Keith Moon, Supersonic Personal Situations with Oasis, and 2021's new book on the Star Council called Soul Deep. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, review, give us a retweet, and help to spread the word on Twitter at WellerFanPod. I'll see you next week.